As many of our viewers may already be aware, Healthcare Triage has a podcast. We generally release one episode per month where we interview scientists and healthcare professionals about their work. However, we've been up to something a little different lately that we're pretty excited about, and that's the topic of this week's Healthcare Triage. We've released plenty of episodes complaining about the quality of many scientific studies, the conclusions being drawn from them, and their representation in the media. There are major examples, like Andrew Wakefield's debunked work on vaccines and autism. And then there are thousands of smaller examples, like those nutrition studies we're always side-eyeing around here. Several of you have commented on past episodes, asking why these studies are continually done so badly, and that's a great question. Science has what many call a replication crisis, which essentially means that the results of many scientific studies can't be confirmed when done repeatedly. The culture of science has a lot to do with that. This topic matters a lot to us and to a lot of other people as well. So with support from the National Institutes of Health, we decided to tackle it and get some answers. We gathered a bunch of experts and spent many hours interviewing them. And the result of all these efforts is an eight-episode podcast series on how the culture of science affects the reproducibility of science. And we hope we'll shed some light on the situation and spark some movement in a better direction for science as a whole. Our group of experts consisted of an array of scientists, science funders, entrepreneurs, editors of scientific journals, and prominent media journalists. With their help, we set out to define the problem in episode one. What exactly is the replication crisis? How do we come to recognize it? And does everyone think it's a problem? Spoiler alert, almost everyone does. Once we've answered those questions, we moved on to a second episode to determine why it's a problem. Presumably, scientists become scientists because they're curious, because they like to answer questions, because they like to find solutions. So why then are so many of them engaging in practices that don't lead us to reliable answers and solutions? Another spoiler alert, it's all about incentives. From there, we built the next four episodes around very specific aspects of science culture and the forces that help to shape it. Episode three is focused on funding because scientific careers live or die based on funding and that affects the way science is conducted. That is often true even if, no, especially if it's government funded as opposed to corporation funded science. We use this third episode to look at the way funding has changed over time, to look at grant writing and funding practices, and to zero in on how all this affects scientific integrity. Episode four is focused on publishing. In science, publication is the coin of the realm. That means if you don't publish, you're dead in the water. We also call this publisher perish. Much like funding, you won't have a long career in academic science without publications. We use this fourth episode to talk about how that sets up a terrible system of incentives. We also talk about many problems related to publishing, including journal prestige, journals in general, selective publishing of results, and peer review. Another spoiler alert, peer review is good, but it's not the guarantee of quality we make it out to be. In episode five, we talked to prominent journalists from places like National Geographic, BuzzFeed, and The Atlantic to ask, what role does the media play in all of this? We cover media hype of scientific studies, the role of the media in helping the public understand scientific nuance, and the question of whether it's the media's job to hold science and scientists accountable. In episode six, we delve into the sticky issue of mentorship. As we explain in this episode, science is built on a model of mentorship, and sometimes this can create tricky power dynamics. We lay out these dynamics and even talk to someone about their personal experience with a mentor who exercised their authority to make trainees do questionable things with the data being collected in the lab. To give you an idea of how contentious this topic is in academia, we had to hire a voice actor to mask this person's identity. We also use this episode to touch on whether we're producing too many PhDs with too little preparation for careers outside of academia, creating an environment of competition that drives down scientific quality. And finally, after all those episodes identifying the many problems, we wrap up with two whole episodes on potential solutions. Some of these solutions are in the works and others are still being discussed, but all are interesting food for thought. Some of our experts are even heavily involved in implementing some of those solutions. We've covered a lot of ground with the help of a lot of smart and thoughtful people. You can listen anywhere you get your podcasts. Just search for Healthcare Triage. 
If you're an educator interested in covering this topic in your undergraduate or graduate courses, we've even created free lesson guides to go along with all the episodes. These can be found at www.healthcaretriage.info slash reproducibility dash podcast. We'll also put a link in the description. We're really proud of this series, and we truly hope it inspires the kind of conversation and actions that science needs to do better. We hope you'll go check it out. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode on air pollution in the United States. We'd also really like it if you'd like the video and subscribe to the channel down below and go on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help make the show bigger and better even during a global pandemic. We'd like to especially thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Edward Lillaholm, and Brian Nam, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.